This video is sponsored by Veo Watches. Hey guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com where I look at casual stuff that lasts a long time. And uh, a lot of that's with boots, but I've also been making videos about really nice jeans for five years now. And I'm ready to do my list of my favorites, which of course on the internet means I have to call them the best salvage denim brands. Now, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions as to what salvage denim is. I did a whole video up here uh, answering a lot of those common questions and common myths in the description below. In short, Salvage denim means denim woven on antique shuttle looms, as opposed to the projectile looms that make most denim today. This denim takes 10 times longer to make, and typically, although not by definition, it has more thickness and character and durability, and it wears and fades better than your mall brand denim. Everyone wears jeans. If you're in public and look around right now, you'll see at least half of the guys around you wearing jeans, so why not get the best jeans you can buy? Links to all these are in the description below, along with an article. So my favorite brand after much thought is Shoco Atelier, and here's why. It's not a big conglomerate, which do exist in this space. It's a small family owned outfit in Richmond, Virginia, run by the lovely Anthony Lupesco, whose dad spent most of his career in tailoring and suiting in Italy, and he eventually became Shoco's production expert as well. So the whole family kind of works together. And Anthony said he just loved the idea of having a tangible product at the end of your work day, and quote, Since we're making something in America, I figured you can't get much more stereotypical than a pair of jeans. And he's really committed to this idea of jeans as your daily companion that shares your adventures with you, and and he wants you to have that relationship with him. So he offers free lifetime repairs on any and all of his jeans, which is such a huge bonus for the brand. They're also made really sturdily, like the pockets are riveted and lined so they don't pull away like some of my jeans, you're gonna get holes in them from your keys. The rivets are leather backed to make the pants easy to repair. Like what's funny is because they do lifetime repairs for free, it makes business sense for them to not have to do too many. So they make them really, really well. They've got a good range of simple denims that aren't too over the top. They have a good line of fits. They do seasonal offerings as well, like linen salvage. Their Kojima though is the flagship one. And I did a whole video on a very faded pair you can check out. But as you can see, it's just great denim. Much of the denim is woven in America as well, which is extremely rare for salvage denim, but like the Dahlia Mills, they have collections from there. Also from Collect Mills in Japan and Candiani in Italy, like really, really world renowned places uh, for the quality of their denim. And lastly, there's a big one for me, the pricing is very fair for their product. For everything I just told you, if you know a thing or two about the space, you would assume the jeans are well over 300 bucks, but their Kojimas, uh, which is like the premium one, 275 bucks, and a lot of their products like stretch denim, uh, black selvage, gray selvage, are well under 250 bucks. So that's what really put them over the top to the number one spot for me. And also, uh, I got a 10% discount code from them as well. So right there, get 10% off, there you go. Oh, hi. You know, whether I'm braving the savage wilds of Central Park, enjoying a pretentious wine tasting, slugging tequila in Mexico City, or exploring Mesoamerican pyramids, I love, being sponsored by Veo Watches. Now, seriously though, I practically never take sponsorships if you've seen my videos before, but if you follow my Instagram, you'll know that Veo is my go-to watch brand. So it was a really easy yes when they reached out and I'm pretty pumped for this partnership. You've seen on my channel as well, maybe, that I've done videos from Indonesia to Mallorca, and that's why my personal favorite Veo watch is the G5 Meridian GMT. So it's a watch that evokes travel and adventure, it's tough as all hell, but it also looks great with the suit. The GMT dual time zone functionality lets you keep time with your home base. It's self-winding, so it has perpetual automatic timekeeping with a 42-hour power reserve for between wears. It has a waterproof warranty to 200 meters, and the sapphire crystal is the best material to protect against shock. Plus, the G5 is assembled in the United States of America. It's also really easy to change out the straps. This has a black face and a blue and red bezel, my particular model. So I'll swap it to a black strap if I'm doing something like black jeans and a blue jacket, or to a blue strap if I'm wearing more earth tones, while the Jubilee bracelet dresses it up perfectly. I like their field watches too, I've got two of them. And uh, as much as I want you to click my link below and buy it, I also encourage you to look around the web for other people's opinions because the reviewers all agree. They're just like really solid, well-designed and well-priced watches. Uh, link in the description below uh, if you want to click that one. Next up, if you can spend a bit more money, but not crazy high for the space, although once I did get a $700 pair from this company, but most of their jeans are about 300 bucks, I'm talking about Tanuki, a totally Japanese brand that has a devoted following on the raw denim subreddit. They're doing really cool experimentation with their fabrics that still manage to be fairly subtle. Like for instance, I have their Amagumo denim jacket that's dyed with black beans, which actually comes out to a nice indigo, slightly purplish, like indigo, dark indigo color. Uh, on this site, they've also got like a denim dyed with saffron and turmeric right now that has more golden fades. 
They'll do really traditional dyeing with Sumi ink for the darker fabrics. And they aren't stuck trying to imitate vintage denims or fits like some companies do uh, where like that's like their brand. Tanuki has more of a modern streetwear bent to their brand. And they're comfortable just coming up with stuff that hasn't been made before or like refining or coming up with interesting fabrics. Like again, yeah, like black bean dyeing. But also I have some 24 ounce canvas pants from them. They don't make those anymore though. And that's actually one of the downsides of Tanuki is a lot of their products and fabrics are one and done which makes making a long lasting video like this one, like one that's had to live on the internet for a while, kind of hard because they don't really have many permanent offerings. But it does keep everything very rare and a lot of it's very, very exclusive. And that obviously has a certain appeal as well. So like whatever they've got an offer right now, you can be rest assured that it is cool. Plus they often do collaborations with uh, Oni, which is a more secretive brand, which is why I'm wearing this 21.5 ounce secret denim from them, which is really cool. They are my thickest jeans and it is the just about practically the same as the Oni Secret Denim. Just like a slightly different like yarn thickness. It's always really cool and a very, very big bonus of them that elevates them in the Japanese denim space is that a native English speaker does their marketing and Instagram. So it's easier to get info and send inquiries and buy online than the majority of Japanese brands. There's nothing wrong with the Japanese brand being Japanese. Tanuki is just more digitally present uh, than many of their competitors and like more uh, more engaged with like Western consumers. And if you wanna see an interview I did with that English speaking marketing guy, check out my video on their $700 jeans in the description below uh, or up here. Even though those jeans aren't offered anymore. Okay, so next up we've done classic Americana selvage. We've done more modern and expertly and innovatively dyed selvage. Next, I can't do this video without talking about probably the biggest selvage brand and that is Naked and Famous. They have a store here in New York City and I've done a million videos in that store. I've also visited their headquarters in Montreal and that Canadian angle is important actually because Japan and Canada have a good trading relationship that lowers uh, tariffs, import fees and stuff, which means that Japan woven, Canadian made, like stitched together jeans is pretty well priced for the space. Their basic uh, raw denim is called Left Hand Twill, but their CEO is called the Willy Wonka of denim for good reason. Over the years I've seen glow in the dark denim, scratch and sniff denim, jeans made with possum hair, with milk, uh, ones that fade rainbow. They're also really famous for their 32 ounce denim, which is like some three times thicker than more brands. And they even have a 40 ounce pair that I tried in Canada. But at the time, the loom that made the fabric was struggling with it a lot. So I don't know if they're able to bring that to market. Anyway, good prices and many experimental uh, conversation piece fabrics. Uh, they don't always have a ton of fits. Sometimes they have just three, but a lot of them have like five or six. And the company got so widespread and popular for a reason. Like they're very cool and very wearable which are good adjectives for jeans. And then on the other side, you have brands that like the denim very smooth and consistent. This means less variation from pair to pair, but this brand Ironheart has rightfully earned a devoted cult following for its selvage that is very smooth and therefore very, very comfortable in addition to a really impressive array of fits and perhaps the most famous heavy denim out there, which is their 25 ounce denim that my co-host Troy owns. The denim and stitching is so uniform that it is a feat unto itself, an example of Japanese perfection in manufacturing, especially given its selvage denim, which is made typically on chattering old looms that are known for making so many imperfections, like, like slub and nep and stuff that denim heads often covet. Not so with Ironheart, who sells some of the most sparklingly perfect selvage you'll find. And while some think that will make for boring fades, and while they do fade very slowly, Troy's pairs here clearly show your jeans will look beautifully well loved as time goes on. Personally, I prefer like the weird nutty, bumpy, slubby, neppy denim, uh, but Ironheart is really good for pairing with a shirt or jacket that has a lot of character, you know, so you're not contrasting. I own two of their deck jackets as well, and they're all I wear once it's snowing in New York. And whatever you're wearing, whether your tops have more texture or not, Ironheart is sort of like the really, really high quality jean for guys that want smoother, less weird looking jean, but like still really scream high quality. As for the best stretch selvage denim, there's a pretty broad consensus that uh, Horoshi Kato is top of the line here. They are made, the, the fabric is from Japan and they're put together in Los Angeles, they're made in LA. Now, a note on stretch denim, uh, there are guys in this space who find it heresy because they really like the vintage nature of selvage denim, which is how jeans were made before the 1950s broadly. So there's that heritage aspect that a lot of guys like that historical accuracy. But while I'm yet to find a stretch denim that breathes as well as cotton, I can't deny that it is a lot more comfortable to travel in or, you know, like watch a movie in or, or like maybe do anything in, you know, which is, which is why you will see most, although not all selvage brands throw some stretch denim into their product line. It is still woven on shuttle looms, 
it still fades very nicely. It just has like two to sometimes 10% elastane or polyurethane. Now Kato or Kato has sort of cornered the market on stretch selvage. They do have some 100% cotton jeans, but like the brand and what they're best known for is, is their stretch. And they achieve this with 4% polyurethane, 96% cotton. That's their magic number for being stretchy, like much stretchier than the 2% stuff that's more common in like Flint and Tinder's 365 pants or Taylor Stitch's Boss Duck canvas. The 4% makes them sweatpant like, but still relatively durable and uh, they don't uh, stretch out either. So they, they do achieve like some, some very precise science or some precise magic there like with, the, with those exact numbers. They range from 10 ounces for summer to 14 ounces for colder weather. And I've won my 10 and a half ounce black raw denim ones all summer. Stretch, again, doesn't breathe as well as 100% cotton, but I love that they have this really lightweight 10 and a half ounce one that basically balances it out, like because it's so thin, like that's even thinner than your typical more brands, which are 11, 12 ounces. Like it, it is rare to get something like uh, that's, that's 10 ounces. But those jeans that I got, the black ones, I did get them hemmed much too short, so I don't know if I should keep them or not. But still, been wearing them, really enjoying the comfort. Kato has four fits, slim, skinny, straight, and tapered. That's not what they call them, that's about what they are. Most of these cuts are, are quite slim and not very high rise. Like the, the straight leg one, that's called the hammer, relatively roomy, uh, but they don't have high rise relaxed tapered fit. That's really popular and it's what fits me best personally. So what I did, I sized up on their scissor tapered fit jeans and had the waist altered and they're still pretty slim. So I'm waiting for them to release a proper high rise relaxed taper fit, but they have four fits. They probably have what you want and they're not too expensive either. They used to be pretty overpriced, but now they're mostly under 250 bucks, which is pretty good for what you get. On the other hand, uh, if you want the widest array of fits, the best, the best fit, I reckon, in, in selvage denim. I mean, Einhardt's are very good, but I think I gotta mention Nudie Jeans here. They are a very, very big company, maybe the biggest in the space for selvage denim. They're based in Scandinavia, which has actually a big following for selvage denim. And they keep prices mostly under 300 bucks and they have nine fits that you can choose from. So that's that's very good. So if you really want the fit to be just so, uh, they are a very good place to look at. And another really cool thing about Nudie is they take sustainability super, super seriously. They only use organic cotton, which really does matter for sustainability. It's not greenwashing. And they partner with the Fair Wear Foundation to make sure the materials used are safe and they conduct regular audits of everyone in their supply chain like all the way from yarn spinners to zipper manufacturers. And for each product, you can see where every single component comes from. So it's very transparent as well. All right, that was six entries instead of five. Do I have time for any more? No, no, I think I'll, I think I'll end the video here. There's a pretty good lay of the land. I got like the Americana ones, I got the unusual ones, the more modern ones, more vintage ones, the ones with lots, lots of fits. That's, that's a pretty good lay of the land. Uh, but I do have an article in the description below uh, on my blog with a couple of other entries, including the best budget salvage, if you want to check that out. And um, that's, that's it, man. Yeah, subscribe also here to this channel where I look at casual stuff that lasts a long time. And join me for the next video. We'll talk about something cool and durable and casual. I like that stuff. Uh, see you later. Um, bye. Goodbye.